Okay. So, any um, seeing it, seeing it as it is startup um, startup day, does anyone want to kind of explain um, something that they have purchased from a startup, particularly if it's a fashion startup? Any stories um, that anyone wants to? Hello, people. No, 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 no. It's <coughs> A little conversation going on in the middle there. <laughs> so, any oh, volunteer at the back there. Are, are you wanting to just explain your what you purchased? Is there a mic nearby? Yeah. <coughs> Ooh, just gentleman here. So, what did you, what did you buy? Why? Who did you buy it from? It's just there, just at the back. Um, hello. I bought uh, a couple of cat suits for a, from a startup. Cat suits. <laughs> um, was it to wear? Not for, you? not for myself. <laughs> was it for your cat, or is it another kind of cat suit here? Um, no, it's uh, it's actually sort of like a dance suit that we had to buy. Uh, my uh, my name is Sadza. I I'm one of the um, exhibitors here. Uh, we got a gig from a PR company the other day. Uh, they wanted two models to be dressed in a uh, all white cat suit. And they gave me very little time to actually get this all done. The good thing was, because they were a startup, I emailed the guy on a Sunday. And I said, look, I need this urgently. Uh, what can you do? You know, He actually answered my email on a Sunday uh, afternoon at 9 o'clock in the, in the night. Uh, and you know, I, I said to him, look, I'm in a bit of a situation. And I need to get this done as soon as possible. So you know, he, he, he and I, we sort of did a deal to say, look, post the next day and I'll pay you a, few, you know, a couple of more quid than usual. Um, and you know, I couldn't sort of imagine ha this happening with someone you know, like a big, big company. So yeah, because it was a startup, you know, it was a success story. You know. the white, there's three white cat suits around somewhere. <coughs> ah, even better. Is there photographs that we could There, there are photographs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe post them to Twitter or something. OK, one more. Thank you. Um, just, it, this is about beginning me sensing markets, by the way, just in case you're wondering why I'm asking this. One more. OK, person, or well, either of you, yeah? I'm actually wearing it right now, the T-shirt I'm wearing. Stand up. <laughs> you know, you have to do this. <laughs> um, bought it in She's New York. Wearing. 14th Street, it's a brand called Shane. Right, okay. A little twiggy thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new take on modeling. Um, yeah, bought it in New York. It's a company called Shane. They do t-shirts and great design and print, so my startup contribution. So why, why did you buy it? What was the sort of, how did you hear You've seen this? This is cool, come on. It's just cool. <laughs> it's just really cool. So it was just something that you wanted. Yeah, and it's a great t-shirt fabric. Like, it's the type of t-shirt I love to wear. It's really thin. It's it's great, it's got this good logo, it kind of goes with everything, so. Yeah. And, and, and as you were so keen next door, would you just want to? <laughs> now that's a buster, because I'm not wearing it, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's this brand called Pero. It's P-E-R-O, um, it's an Indian brand. And she does something very similar to what Emma just spoke about, about a fair trade scarves, and she just beautifies it with some beads and sells it all around the world. And because it's P-E-R-O, the Indian meaning of it is to wear, but she does it with a French accent, so it says very well in the French um, countries because it's, again, fair trade and it's personal and it's handmade. And so I think something like that, which has a story. And um, how did you hear of it? Um, it's one of my friends. She told me about it and the word of mouth and just went down to buying it. It comes really crumpled in a little ball. Mm -hmm. A bit like the tin. I like them. I know. So just uh, the reason I, I'm asking that was we've got three different examples there. Respon one was about responsiveness and just being able to do really good customer service that meant that you could you purchased just because it was cool, but also it was in the right place by the sounds of it as well. Uh, and something that was different but friends word of mouth. So the reason I'm asking these questions is partly to help you also to think about some of the markets and what we're going to be doing later on and understanding audiences which is why Melina is here. Um, and Melina is from Human Digital, and she's an expert, really, in understanding customers <laughs> and um, how they operate. And she's going to be telling us a lot more about that. So over to you, Melina. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I am Melina X from Human Digital. Um, Human Digital, I don't know, you might 
most probably have not heard of us. Um, we are a business intelligence agency and we are part of the um, MNC Saatchi group. Uh, you might have heard of them. Um, and so we provide insight into the digital expression of attitudes and opinions and behavior um, by analyzing what people say online. Um, we believe that insight um, into like the complexity and nuances um, of human behavior must be human-led um, at, at its core, but I'll get to that later. Um, what I'm now, uh, the next kind of 10 minutes, 10-15 um, minutes, I will tell you about why any brand in the UK should consider insights from the digital world in order to understand their customers, and also um, why you need to go beyond traditional um, research models to achieve this. So to just set the scene, I have brought you some stats um, from the UK. The most recent penetration rates show that 84% of the UK population are online. In hard numbers, that's almost 53 million people. So clearly, digital has become an integral part of the lives of many of us. Um, I can see lots of people with their iPads and so on. So clearly, um, they're, they're the Twitter handles, everybody's online these days. Um, now you might ask yourself, what are those people actually doing online? So. Um, the, there are some more stats. Um, think about yourself, um, your own behavior online. So you might think, oh, but I've never posted anything on a forum. Maybe because you are fashion people, it's more likely that you have actually um, your own blog and you tweet regularly. But if you think generally everybody, um, the, the average British person might not have posted something on a forum. However, um, think about, have, have you ever read the reviews other people had written on TripAdvisor or Booking.com before you book a holiday? Well, if you've done that, then you are part of the 40% of UK holiday makers who research on social media before they make a decision. And actually half of those change their opinion afterwards. So if that applies to you, you can count yourself part of the majority because not all people who are online create content on open sites such as forums or blogs, but the content that does exist actually influences. So um, only 16% are creators, as in um, here creators is defined as somebody who, who publishes something on open sites, so not your own Facebook page if that is closed, but on open sites, and 63% um, are so-called spectators, so they don't publish themselves, but they do consume. So thus far we have established digital is relevant and people use social media not only to publish their own opinion but also to make up their opinion by consuming what others have said. So let's look at the data itself. When most people think about the internet, it's about ones and zeros. They want to analyze the click screams, the pass-through rates, the unique visitors' numbers, bounce rates, dwell times, and so on. However, by analyzing the click stream or the bounce rate, you don't actually understand people and what they think. You have a number, but that's not enough to actually understand your customers. So we at Human Digital don't see the internet like that. It's not ones and zeros to us. We see it as kind of an unprompted safari of customer opinion. So this, I will go into uh, this a bit detail, um, into detail in a bit, but um, it's a, it, this is a key difference to traditional research methods. So if you think about traditional research methods, you have focus groups, you have surveys. Both of these mean you have to ask people what do you think about this? What do you, how did you like your shopping experience? And so on. It is likely that they will answer something of you know, what they think you want to hear, not what they actually think. It's one of the 
downsides of doing surveys. Um, we, however, we, we listen to what people are saying online. So we don't ask anybody. We just analyze, I mean, just analyze what is there already. So we, we research and um, look in the online space to understand what people are saying and gather that data so that this is becoming our data set. So that um, means that we don't have to prompt or incentivize anybody and thereby influence them. So these ones and zeros of the internet to us mean we look on Twitter, for example, we look at forum posts, we look at blog posts, we look at YouTube videos, and much more. Because there are people on the internet, and those people talk about their experiences, mostly with a brand, a product, or a service. This is what people love to share. I'm sure you've done it, or maybe you have done it in the past. Um, but then, as a brand, you want to know, how can I access this data? How can I make sense of it and gain insight? So, making sense of the data. You can do, or most people suggest two things. Either they put somebody of their team in front of Twitter and monitor the brand mentions, monitor the hashtags, okay? You can do that, but we would say, well, it's, it's kind of a futile exercise if you want to understand the full breadth of the landscape because Twitter is just one of many platforms where you can gather data and gather insight, and it's the analysis of the amalgamation of all the comments that actually is going to tell you something, is going to show you trends, is going to you know, give you an, a real opinion um, or a real overview of opinions. Another thing that... Um, most big companies um, would suggest is, oh, just use one of these um, social media scraping tools. So there are like Radiant 6, Meltwater Buzz, Brandwatch, and so on. There are plenty of them. They scrape the, the um, internet for certain keywords. And then they have machines that analyze this and give you the results. Um, we would say besides technical problems that, for example, machines can't see beyond password protected sites. So many forums you have to um, have a login in order to join the conversation and in order to see what people are saying. Um, but also we, we at Human Digital would say um, a machine simply can't make sense of emotions or notions of language and culture. If you say, for example, many, um, have, you might have seen it, LOL, like lol. Um, okay, what, what does that mean? As a word itself, you can't really make sense of it. How is a machine going to know whether in this context somebody was saying it's really funny or it's really stupid or, you know, there are so many different ways of um, analyzing just this little three-letter, three-character word. Sarcasm, irony. You can only... I, I, we have not so far seen a machine that can actually understand sarcasm or irony. So the data of this research is human expressions, um, which is why we look at the world through the customer's lens. And we use human analysts, which is why we're called human digital, and we use human analysts to understand the cultural differences, understand um, syntax, sarcasm, irony, and so on. So to sum it up, you could say digital is relevant. People publish opinions in an unprompted manner. Um, the digital space provides a great source for understanding customers if it's done correctly. Um, the data for this research is very much multimedia. It's videos, it's pictures, it's text, um, it's um, sound. And humans are needed to make sense of this data set. Otherwise, the output is a bit dodgy. And 
um, the the customer insight that you will get from there actually complements and enriches more kind of traditional forms of um, customer insights, market research, data analytics, and so on, um, because it's just another layer on top um, of your of your um, analytics. That's as far as I try to keep it very yeah. short and. Um, I've got like a question because a lot of these. Um, people here in startups, right? So, um, and you know, you, you do lots for big brands, yeah. And um, and really, because I, I know Melina from we've worked together before, and I, I and really great insights for some of the brands we were working for. When it comes to startups, they haven't necessarily got such a big budget. So, mm. what would be your top tip for them to? Because often. You know, you just, as you say, you just go straight to Twitter and or you might have Facebook page or a Pinterest page and you think, oh, obviously everyone loves our stuff when it might just be a few people. Mm. So how do you begin to do that as a, as a small business? Mm. Um, as first of all, our research or our previous research has found that 90% um, of comments of a brand actually take place outside of their owned channels. So owned channels would be, if I'm a brand, then my own Facebook page, my own Twitter page, um, and so on. That's my own channels. But 90% of conversations actually take place outside of it. So already as a, as a startup, setting up searches that um, will provide you with um, you know, relevant conversations outside of your own Facebook page, because of course this you can see every day, but what about the stuff that's going on elsewhere? So just um, some good Google News searches and perhaps setting up an RSS feed? Exactly. Um, okay. And is there also, because we always talk about things like Facebook and Twitter, but really the social web's huge. So where should people make, be making sure they don't miss? Because often the conversations aren't happening what we go with what we do rather than what customers do. Mm. Um, this is very, very country specific. Um, I mean, already, for example, if most most basic example, Google, um, you can't use or Facebook. You know, if you go to China, well, it's a bit difficult. It's completely different social media um, landscape. Um, even if in Europe, you can see lots of different. Um, platforms that that yeah differ really a lot um, from the different countries so um, finding out who who is your who are your customers in the UK if you are focusing on the UK and then searching for the most relevant forums for example would be a start because yeah, um, often people forget about forums yes yes you know, and, you know we get talked about blogs but actually forums are still being massively used yeah. and where people really like local forums all sorts of areas where and we just forget about them because we think yeah. they're old fashioned yeah especially forums actually with forums um i'm not sure whether you've heard of mumsnet or netmums they are two forums that in our research even if we do research for big technical companies or you know um cell phone providers or ins car insurances and so on where you would think, well, it doesn't really have anything to do with mums, you would be surprised. There's so much going on. Okay. So, we have kind of time for, I think, one or two questions from Lena. So, does anyone have... Okay, gentleman at the front here. Did you say who you are? I'm Raphael. Hello, my name is Raphael, and I would like to know <coughs> if there's a big difference between men and women in the UK on social media. Do you see there any difference in behaviour and interaction? Or can you say that's basically all the same, how they engage with brands? Mm. That, we would say, differs extremely on which audience you're looking at. Um, if you're looking at the fashion audience, the results will be completely different than if you're looking at, I don't know, a technical audience to, to take two extremes. So to, to generalize, um, it's... Um, I think the stats, I don't actually know the stats, I think the stats are um, slightly more women than men, but that's an average of the UK, that's not really telling you much about your specific audience, because it might differ. I don't, I don't have those stats um, from the top of my mind. Where, right where now. is someone going to find them if they needed to? 
Um, Forrester does a lot of those general research um, that yeah, my stats came from earlier as well. Um, Comscore as well Com can be score, quite, yeah. quite good as are Hitwise and sometimes actually Ofcom um, data is really good yeah. to, to understand um, general demographic, uh, general <coughs> internet demographics. Mm. There's a question over here. Hello, hi. Um, I'm considering starting up um, a fashion label of some sort, and I have zero money. And so, what sort of um, what sort of tables would you recommend? Things like um, monitoring sentiment. What sort of uh, packages would you recommend? Because I, I don't have access. I wouldn't have access to things like Forrester because you have to subscribe to them, mm -hmm. and all the other things you'd use. You come from an agency, I presume. So all the other tools you'd use in an agency, you've paid for and have been subscribed for by your agency. Mm -hmm. Can you recommend a sort of startup toolkit that we can have similar access um, to be able to monitor sentiment and the like without having to subscribe? Here is exactly the crux of the problem because we would say no tool, no package is going to give you sentiment because there are machines sitting at the back of it who think they can say whether it's you know positive or negative. No, no, no. We only use humans. <laughs> yeah. Um, to get, I mean, a general idea. Although we would say it's highly un, it's not very valid. Um, you can go to socialmentions.com, for example. Um, there you can enter certain autopsy.com. You can enter certain um, keywords and have a look, try it out. It's, it's, I, I'm going to back up Melina on this one. Um, that uh, natural language processing, which is what they're using to do um, sentiment analysis, is really um, not that accurate. Yeah. So right. even if you go to someone like Social Mention, what you'll find is that most of the responses are neutral yeah. because they can't actually find out. I so mean, you it's, have to... It's, it's not just the sentiment. Okay. It's just the kind of the, the social media platform to be able to um, collect data and mm -hmm. analyse it without having to pay for subscriptions. Because the difference between I think you'd be surprised, yeah. actually, at what brands do and don't pay for, yeah. um, number one. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm about to answer your question. So um, one of them, if you just want to analyse, and it's a plug-in, is Social Bro, and that will do your Twitter. Hmm. Uh, you can go to Social Mention if you want just a kind of overarching... Um, analysis. It's one of the few analysis tools, but it's not always that accurate. Hmm. Um, I would set up, though, a dashboard where you're trying to use something like NetVibes, um, which will allow you to gather lots of different data from lots of different points for free uh, to a certain point Then you have to pay a small fee. The more dashboards you have, the more you have to pay. Um, and you're trying to gather data from as many points as possible. You're just trying to use as many tools as you can out there. And that the, another quite good one, which doesn't often get mentioned, is Addictomatic, which is A-D-D-I-T-O-M-A, Addictomatic. Um, and that will give you sort of a, a very quick dashboard um, meant on, based on RSS feeds. Uh, there's lots out there, but it's also what is it that you were trying to do and what mm. your customers are doing. Because a lot of these are really good for global searches, but they're not very good for local, um, localised results or that good for specific verticals as well. So you have to, it's, un, it's trying to understand what you're researching. We only have time for perhaps one. There's so many hands in this session. Okay. I, I just want, I just, just want to say that because uh, I work with big brands as well as startups and they all use free services as well as the big brands also use. Yeah. I mean there's a survey uh, to Luna which is cheap as chips and some of the big research agencies use it and then mark it up by stupid prices. Yeah. It's brilliant and quick <laughs> so it's really cheap to Luna. Surveys. To Luna. But, okay. but if, um, I've, because I've, there's a whole bunch of other uh, free sites that are out there that will help you all. So if anyone's interested, I'll be more than happy to help you guys yeah, just put a pull list together a list. Yeah. 
and, and then chuck it out. And also, when I'm talking to brands about this area, I'm often saying, don't don't use the paid for tools until you know what you're looking for. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, um, so, and, and don't have a conversation with any of these guys until you know what it is that you can query about them. Because even the biggest brands and global ones, they'll have problems with language, for example. And a lot of the tools can't handle more than English or a few of the major languages. So just because you think people have money doesn't mean they necessarily have the uh, different problems. <laughs> mm. uh, there was a lady just there and a uh, question there. Hi there, I'm Michaela from Joy of Clothes. I just want to say, you know, social media is such a vast uh, platform and uh, you know, using, you know, the social media, I found, you know, like all media platforms are not working for me. So saying, you know, like, don't, you know, like, be overwhelmed. You don't have to be on every single platform. Test and try, you know, like, what works, you know. Facebook doesn't work for everyone. I mean, if crafts, you know, I don't know what craft is, you know, having a Facebook page, you know. But, and as well, Twitter, you know, Twitter works, you know, nowadays, you know, when you have really news or when you have, you know, important information, but doesn't work always. Uh, you know, like for fashion side as well. Then you have, you know, as well, pin interest, you know, and Tumblr, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera. I think, you know, you should only do what you can do really well. Um, so saying, you know, like, um, if you don't update it regularly, that you, people can see that you're very passionate and very serious about it, don't even summer start. So you don't have to be everywhere. Find what you like, what you're good at, what you understand, what you're passionate about. And also, you know, what is very good before you think of uh, social media, maybe on website, Google Analytics. This is in summer for free, so it gives you a lot of free referrals, you know, and as well the internet action where it's coming from, which countries are clicking on you, where all the traffic comes from. And what is very good as well are emails. So when you, for instance, are on MailChimp, you know, it gives you fantastic reports really fantastic from the open click rate and what, what item was clicked on most. So that's all what I want to say. Thank you. Sorry Actually, you. yeah, I just quickly wanted to add, this is very much in line what we keep telling brands um, with uh, which we work because often brands decide, oh yeah, I just want a Facebook page. And then we say, well, we just did the research. Your audience is not on Facebook. They are all on these particular forums they're not on Facebook there's no conversations around your topic on Facebook and so understanding first where your audience is and then targeting that is much more valuable than just as you said just opening random um, profiles on every single social platform that you can think about we have one more you're it thank you um, my name is George I'm from uh, Wolf and Badger um, I was intrigued by your mention of, of forums and also more um, contemporary, perhaps, social media. Um, is there a move towards integrating those slightly old-fashioned forums with some of these more, um, some of these newer platforms like Twitter and Facebook? And, and, and is there, you know, is there a link between those two, or is it very much a, a forums or? What, what do you mean by integrate? Well, forums seem to act within their own. Mm. Space, yes. Um, whereas some of the new social media uh, can sort of go more viral and, and spread out. Um, but by the design, forums are for these very closed environments. Um, for example, if you say link up, you couldn't, um, I mean, a tweet is what, 140 characters, you wouldn't be able to tweet a forum post or something like that in terms of linking it up, mm. if that's what you mean. No, no I'm just wondering no. whether those technologies have, have come together in any way I th I recently. Think Not yet. <laughs> One of the places where it might be of interest, but I don't know for fashion, is Reddit, where it's yeah. kind of a bit more um, news orientated and socially driven, yet still a forum, and yet things go viral. Um, but it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, it's a lot of these places about human interaction and where people want to hang out and where people want to discuss things with other their friends that they meet in those places. So when you en if you do enter into it as a brand, which I rarely recommend, it, it, it's always with, well, this is like someone's house. They, you know, this is a club. This is a kind of a lounge where people are talking to each other who they like or they like to antagonize mm. or they like to sometimes wind up. Um, so it, it's perhaps not understanding, thinking that these are separate technologies, mm -hmm. but thinking of these as like separate rooms or separate places. Um, 
would be my. I, I guess I ask because at Wolf and Badger we um, promote, support, and retail over a hundred different independent jewellery and fashion brands, and we're increasingly looking at ways of bringing those brands together to talk to each other to help solve some of the problems that were mentioned earlier in terms of uh, lack of sharing of information on manufacturing and, and other things. We want those brands to talk to each other, but we also want to then spread that information to a wider audience so that they can um, access it in the, in the manner that perhaps some of the newer social networks might facilitate. It, it sounds like you need a whole kind of structure to think about what, what, what each tool is doing and why, which mm. I'm sure myself or uh, there's probably quite a few people in the room happy to have a chat to you about because um, there's quite a lot of problems, not challenges that you're trying or things that you're trying to solve in just <coughs> asking about forums. You, know, you ask forums and it just explodes. Okay, we're about to go into more of a problem solving session, so don't feel that this is um, an, a, a stopping to the questions. But Melina, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. <laughs>